You're listening to Prodcast, the personal productivity podcast from CRM Audio, with your hosts Matthew C. Anderson and Joel Lindstrom. All right, Matthew, I'm hoping you can help me today. <laughs> My OneNote is a mess. It's like a jungle of of uh, many different assorted half you know, halfway started messy notebooks and and i know there's got to be a better way so can you help me with my mess joel it sounds like it might be a tall task but i am totally willing to to give it my best all right so here's the thing that one note i love it and i hate it because it's like uh, more so than almost any other app it really is an empty slate i mean word documents have a defined purpose and you do a certain thing and they fit a certain format excel spreadsheets uh adobe photoshop files all those have a really narrow purpose whereas OneNote, being i guess the digital version of the trapper keeper i had in fifth grade is just kind of the open slate that can go wherever you want and can be as wide or tall or long or as many pages as you want and that's great but it's also really doesn't lend itself to really how you should use it you know what should should i i have three different customers should i put them all you know part of me wants to create one notebook that has you know all my customers in it and in a customer tab but then i find i need to share my notes or collaborate with one of my colleagues about one of those customers and that drives me to put them in their own and i don't know what my tab should be versus just adding pages to a bigger tab Help me. <laughs> all right, all right. So but before we try to completely change out the, the way you feel like you should work, um, first know that the, the way I use OneNote is that there's not a, a golden rule to everything that I'm doing inside of, inside of OneNote. Um, the, there are a few things that you can do within the notes, within the notebooks, uh, whether they're personal notebooks, whether they're shared notebooks that you have um, that are going to allow you to be able to find things a little bit easier later and to be able to group things together, even if, you know, they're not inside of the same section or inside of the same notebook. Um, So a couple of things I, to start out with, um, one is the concept of using tags and tagging inside of uh, notes. Are you are you using any of the the tags, whether they're pre predefined tags or tags you've created yourself? I haven't. Okay, you know, and I'm, I'm familiar with tags from other things like like WordPress. Yep, and uh, and things like that. So. Um... So, yeah, so tell me about tags. Yeah, so so inside of OneNote, um, if you uh, are following along at home, uh, if you have a the OneNote desktop app open, under the Home ribbon uh, tab, there's a Tags section. And you'll notice there are some predefined ones that have like a um, uh, kind of a, a box of the most frequently used ones or the, the highest rated ones that you have in there. And they have keyboard shortcuts with them. So um, out of the box, Microsoft has, I don't know, it's about 20 or so different tags to be able to help you find specific things later. One is a to-do that you can add or a star that you can put on something and so forth. But the first thing that you can do is you can, uh, if you use the little down arrow next to that, you can customize your tags and you can create your own custom tags with What's the little picture of it going to be? If you have it um, based on the order that you have your tags in, you can have them uh, as something that you can hotkey with Control-1, Control-2, and so forth. And uh, what I do here is I have a standard set of tags that I use to be able to remember things later and to look for, um, you know, if it's something that has, uh, if I'm working with a, um, working with a client and there's something that's a a special case or an exception or, you know, those little wiggly bits that I want to make sure that I'm going to remember later, I've got a special tag that I can use for those. Um, And I I just have kind of built up this set of tags over time that will allow me to be able to find this later. So there's the act of setting up the tags and then using them in the notes, which is like the first step of of doing this. Um, Any questions so far? 
Uh, no, I'm following along, playing along at home here. Okay. Is, are your tags available only from the from the desktop app, or do those also work in mobile? So the the tags will still physically show up in mobile, but tagging the act of tagging on mobile is not uh, not something that I've found a way to be able to do. Okay, so yep. I guess this is this is similar to your your method for you know for email and smart folders and things like that where you're using tagging there mm-hmm. do you have similar tagging logic like do you use the same kind of tags or do you have unique kind of tags that you use for for your uh, one note so um there there are a, a it's a different set of tags that I use in OneNote versus what I use in Outlook, um, and the reason for that is a lot of my um, a lot of my stuff that is in OneNote isn't just about some future thing that I need to take action on or something that I'm waiting for a response on. This is information that I'm filing away that I know I want to be able to get back to pretty easily later. So I have things where it's, you know, follow-ups from meetings, certainly. Uh, Important reference information uh, is another one that I have out there. Follow-up questions or ideas I want to investigate is a third one. Um, But then I have a number of different things for, you know, where are, uh, what are different things where I'm going to need to wait for an answer back on somebody to see if I actually got some of that, um, Um, that detail back. But then I have this entire kind of other layer of tagging where but it's almost like defining your own XML tags um, to be able to come up with these kind of common things that you want to be able to find to find later you know design design concepts uh, that I want to be able to find you know you draw a little picture in one note or you have a, a scan of or, you know a, a, a photo that you've taken and dropped in you want to be able to find that later Um the, um, I can tag that as a design reference to be able to find sometime later. So it's it's those kind of things where it's not necessarily actionable, but it's something that I know I want to find again later. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's yeah. So it's it's something that you can find later. So exactly, I I get that. So mm-hmm. you know, I'll be reading things about where Dynamics is going, and I see something, and I need it. I know I'll need to. I want to read that later. I don't have time right now, but I want to. I, I want to use that later there's also things related to industries i work with there's things related to companies i work with you know and so that structure makes sense to me it's the mm-hmm. stuff that's in the middle it, and i'll give you an example um you get an email from your hr department that has information about what's happening with with your benefits package and you mm-hmm. know that i need to find this information eight months from now but i need yep. to i need to remember you know where i put it and i think you know one one note works pretty good for that stuff because i can structure it however there's still some things that are just kind of unusual and mm-hmm. you know fall outside of the tags and and i'm i'm always scrounging around for that because i'm searching and i can't find the exact phrase and and that type of thing that's the part yeah I, so that's what i, what I find so, frustrating so that's that's actually a good a good example or a good use case for like a custom tag that that I would suggest here and and part of it l- l- let me let me follow this that example of the HR document that you want to save and be able to reference to eight months later um, because if you if you take that kind of thing and you know this is a, a longer term you know HR reference or longer term you know uh, like health maybe you go a little more generic just uh, healthcare reference or something like that if you set up using uh, tags in OneNote a custom tag for that and uh, drop that tag into the note uh, you know somewhere. Uh, somewhere on the note, you know, whether it's a specific area or um, kind of highlighting everything in the note, just having it next to that doesn't doesn't really matter there. The the next step or the the next thing to do is to be able to understand how do I find this stuff again later in a more efficient way than just having to use the standard search. And this is there's a tag search that OneNote has that is very very little used, but it is immensely powerful. So. In that tags section of the the home ribbon, there's a find tags button. 
It's got oh, like I a. I see it. I see it's it. It's got. Yeah. Yeah, and when you hit that find tags button, it brings over from the right a a, a little custom search window specific for tags, and you can set the kind of the scope of what you want it to to look at. So whether it's the the current notebook, all notebooks, a certain section, a section group, what have you, um, and if you uh, refresh those results, it you can um, you can see all of the different, uh, I, I group by tag name, and that way I can see kind of at that first level of the hierarchy, what are all the different tag types that I have? Um, you know, so in this case, it would be the, you know, HR document tag that's going to have potential uh, links to several different potential notes that are then in there a little bit later. Um, and it gives you a way to be able to um, kind of, make a little bit more sense out of those tags rather than having to remember what was that tag called, have a, have a really you know complex sorting mechanism for them. Um, the other things that you can do is to, from that tag summary, that search that you put out there, you can create a summary page of those with one of the uh, buttons a little bit further down there. And what that summary page does is it creates a separate OneNote page, uh, you know, just a new page in whatever notebook you happen to have open there. And it gives you a summary of all of the different things that show that were returned in that, uh, that search that you did. So, you know, if you were, if you have these grouped by some of that different information, you don't have to go and, uh, jump out to each of those places to be able to, um, you know, kind of compile that information. It, it just, uh, it condenses it into one place for you. And then from those, uh, within that page, uh, that, that summary page that's been created, if you hover over any of those links that you have or any of those uh, items that were in there that have been tagged, to the left of that is a little OneNote icon that will pop up where you can click on it and it's going to take you through to the note that you had out there. Okay. Um, so, so what what you can ultimately do this uh, use this for is you can filter down that kind of tag summary page of uh, you know kind of what what is it that I'm actually searching for here. Create the summary page, which will give you that quick jumping off point. Um, you can do you know multiple searches to be able to, to get very specific with what it is that you want to find in those different references that you're going to be looking for. And then it's almost like a, a saved search at a point in time um, when you create that uh, create that summary page. Okay, all oh, that sounds really good. Here's here's what I, my question is though: tags versus tabs. So you mm-hmm. get the email beginning of the year that says, Matthew, your new your new salary is going to be four hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, that's that's the one I like getting year. every yeah. year. Okay. <laughs> you don't have a salary tab in any one note. Okay. Do you put it that in an existing tab or do you just put it I mean do you put it in an existing tab and then tag it salary or do you create a new salary tab to hold that information? So that, that's a that's a fair question. Um, I f- for me, I have kind of a general. Um, I call them business keepers <laughs> note <laughs> notebook, um, yeah. and that just has one one tab that ends up being a pretty big archive for me uh, of of that type of information. So I wouldn't. I mean, for me, I, I ask that question of how many times am I going to want to go and, and reference this just absolutely massive salary uh, that 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 I get a notification about every year, um, <laughs> and and do I do I do I have a real need to have those separated out into a different tab versus being able to kind of search through the business archive when I'm looking for salary stuff? Um, you know, when I when I think of the the uh, you know XML tagging kind of you know comments that I was making before. I, I when when I think about setting up a a, ta- a tag in the same way, do I really need a custom tag to be able to you know find that salary you know item from last year versus the year before versus the year before? Um, and 
like with the with the volume of notes that I have, you know, I would rather rely on search to be able to find some of that um, with with just text search than to set up a, a tagging structure for that particular piece of data. Um, but there are there are other things where um, uh, I'll, I'll use the the car insurance that that we get through work on an annual basis. You know, there's an updated. Uh, card, you know, decline the one from the the rental car company. The uh, you know, um, the our our company has our own insurance that covers that. So for that, I do end up using a tag for the um, you know, kind of the the fact that uh, well, one of the tags is that it is a, a business note. Another one of the tags is that it is a um, kind of an annual notice note. Um, okay. and, uh, those, those kind of things I can quickly get to find, get to the most recent one. Um, but those, those, uh, those tags on their own, you know, the business one, there's a lot of stuff that will end up having business tags on it. The annual notice will have a lot of, uh, you know, things on it that aren't business related, but it's the intersection of, of those two tags, um, you know, that, that really would key me into that one. And I can get there either way, really, but um, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing trying to get through that question of how, how deep do I need to go on setting up custom tags for all this stuff versus reusing what I already have. Right. So it's also for me, um, I'm always torn between, should I put this in my one note or in my one drive? Mm-hmm. Because you know, if I have documents like bills from bills and medical statements, and uh, you know, copies of old annual reviews and things like that, documents, I have a folder structure in OneDrive that I put that stuff. But uh, you know, and you can tag stuff there too as well if you want. Yeah. So I, you know, it's it's always a which should this go in? I like OneNote for the just repository of personal emails that I need to hang on to or, or things like that, or notes that I take about either my job, personal life, whatever. But some things are just in the middle there. If I get an, get an email, you know, like that email I was talking to you about, it feels like OneNote's a good place for that, especially if I can tag it and search for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I will often, you know, if it is an actual document, you know, PDFs are a, a really common one here um you know i will save the pdf into my onedrive folder structure and i'll i'll use the uh, copy link uh feature inside of onedrive and if i i know i want to be able to search onenote and find um you know find some information on this but i don't want to put the document there as well i'll just paste that link into a note and then tag the you know tag that note with a couple of different tags. So you know, if I happen to open up OneNote and search for it, I can find that link. And when I click on the link, it takes me out to the document on OneDrive. Okay. Now, what's the one calendar thing you were telling me about? So, yeah, I mean, one one calendar is a, a free add-in for, um, for OneNote. You can find it uh, out at the site OneTastic.com. Uh, sorry, get okay. get one tastic dot com, uh, but the uh, the the specific they have they have a bunch of different kind of macros uh, available for out, uh, for OneNote that are out there. But specifically, the the one that I use a ton is called One Calendar, and uh, that is a related download from One Tastic that takes all of the notebooks that you have uh, open on your uh, on your desktop instance of OneNote and it puts the it plots them out on a calendar letting you know which notes you worked on on which days and uh, what it does is it looks at both the created and any of the modifications that you've done to those notes. So you can see um, it's not just like the most recent modification date or it's not just the uh, the date from the when it was created. You can see kind of what you had worked on and when, and it'll link you out to any of those different notes that you have. 
Oh, so if you know I met with them last Thursday, I know that's where I can find my note. Exactly. And if, if you have a, a good uh, kind of standardized practice around, you know, every time you go into a meeting, you pop open a OneNote page, maybe use the the quick link in the uh, the home menu to add in the meeting details um, there as well and, and, and take notes. It's a really quick and easy way to find your notes from those specific meetings on each of those days. Even if you don't bring in the meeting details, it's still going to show up on the day. You know, you can compare with your, your calendar of, you know, when, when was that meeting? Oh yeah, it was last, uh, you know, last week sometime. Um, you know, you can, you can search, uh, your, your calendar that way and then try to look at the, you know, one note or the, the one calendar, calendar view and you just scan through the the list of notes that you worked on that day um and and you can find it that way as well so it's huge huge time saver and trying to go back and chase down those notes um uh, that from from meetings that you had nice well, i'll download that and try it out yeah right, and, so- and 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 one other one other thing that it that one's particularly good for is trying to figure out when was it that i actually had that meeting. I mean, sometimes you look back at your calendar and it's like, geez, you know, which I had five meetings with this client last week. How do I even find the one that was, um, you know, kind of relevant to what I was doing? Um, you can use one calendar and there's some uh, search functionality that you can have um, within that calendar too. So, and it'll filter down, um, you know, based on whatever search terms you have in the uh, in one calendar uh, one calendar search so you know if you you know if you type in you know say integration because uh, you knew you had a, a meeting with a client about some integration work that you were doing um, it'll filter out any of the notes that don't have integration somewhere in that note oh wow yeah. okay yeah it's pretty pretty cool okay so is there anything else is there anything that you have today that is not productive I sure do, Joel. And this one is a bit of a fun one. I I was out uh, trying to trying to look something up, and I ran across a tip for t-shirt folding in three seconds or less. A special method to be able to fold your t-shirts in only three seconds. Well, I know that I spend all day folding T-shirts, so I'm 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 interested. As do I, and the the rabbit hole went a little bit deeper on this one as I I started trying to understand because I I went to the the video to on this this three second T-shirt folding, and it was actually three and a half minutes long, which seemed awfully awfully long for that little to do. Um, but then there was a related video that said you know fold your T-shirts in under two seconds which I found interesting, clicked through that video, and it's, of course, the exact same method. That, that guy was just a little faster. <laughs> um, but the, the, so what I, what I found so funny about this is the three-second T-shirt folding method, or two-second, depending on who you ask, is dependent on the T-shirt already having been placed on a flat surface, laid out completely flat in a specific <laughs> way, so then you, you grab it in two places, and once you, you know, theoretically say go in your brain and start folding from there, it only takes three seconds. But how long did it take you to get it, you know, ready to go, flattened out, straightened out, so you'd be able to do that? It's probably 15 seconds on its own. Heck, maybe, maybe you're really efficient. Maybe it's 10. But, I mean... I don't know. Maybe I'm just a really great T-shirt folder, but I, I don't take more than ten seconds to fold them the way I do on a on a normal basis, anyway. I'll do it in one second. Just throw in the drawer. <laughs> Perfect. Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, that that's the that's the one I had for this. Um, uh, <laughs> my wife read the book, The uh, Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which was all the rage a year ago. Marie Kondo. And, uh, yes. Yeah, she makes a huge deal about how you fold your socks. And and I I tried that. Um, I, I've actually read the the life changing magic of tidying up, as have many, I'm sure. Um, and and you know there there is something to appreciating your your belongings, appreciating your clothes, thanking the the ones that you're ready to set aside. Um, 
but I, I tell you, I fell off the wagon pretty quick uh, when it came to uh, sock folding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go time myself folding some T-shirts now. Thank you, Matthew. Absolutely. Have a good one, Joel. This has been Podcast, the personal productivity podcast from CRM Audio. You can follow Matthew C. Anderson on his blog, ConnectingTheData.com, where you can download his ebook about eight essential Skype for business hacks. You can also follow him on Twitter at MC Anderson. Joel Lindstrom is on Twitter at Joel Lindstrom. Do you have any feedback for us or questions about how to be more productive? Send an email to mail at podcast.show or leave a comment on the CRM Audio Facebook page. You can subscribe to Podcast at podcast.show, iTunes, or subscribe to the CRM Audio feed to get this podcast and other series from CRM Audio. This is Joel Lindstrom. Until next time, remember to stay productive.